Part of Relationships Radio Show is copyrighted. No one is to use any part of the show without express written consent from myself, Greg Dzinski, or the Art of Relationships. Thank you. Welcome to the Art of Relationships Radio Show. Greg welcomes live calls from listeners in helping with numerous marital and relationship problems. There will be no more tit-for-tat arguments. Greg gets to the root of couples' challenges in a rapid, matter-of-fact format. Plus, applies compassion and humor. Join in discovering how to improve your relationship and your own life. Listen, laugh, and climax. Greg is a licensed professional counselor in the state of Michigan. To others, he's simply known as Detroit's love guru. <laughs> hey, welcome everybody. It is the Art of Relationships radio show. Hopefully everybody's doing okay. Um... I'm Greg Dzinski, your host, as always, Detroit's love guru, fully licensed professional counselor in the state of Michigan, relationship sex specialist, and I also work with grief and trauma. Today, I want to have a little bit of fun to uh, talk about sex. Oh, yeah. What a time to kick it off. It's springtime, warm air is starting to churn in, especially in the northern states. Not only good time about talking about sex, what about Monday? Everybody hates Monday, return to work, and all this aspect. So why not liven it up a little bit and talk about, you know, your sexual taboos, what you won't do, what your partner won't do. Is there a clash? And also talk about, you know, sharing sexual fantasies with your partner, okay? Are you shy, timid about it? But I also want to talk about there are potential dangers and or consequences if you will about sharing your fantasies with your partner okay so we're gonna get uh oh can't see me okay hopefully people can uh reset oh hold on that's my fault there we go thanks listener <laughs> There we go. Okay, now people might be able to see me. Sorry about that. Um, I forgot to switch off the... There we go. Forgot. I forgot to <clears throat> switch over the video streaming software to me, my face. So, going back, uh, people listening to the show, sorry about that little, I guess, Monday uh, hiccup going on. But sharing your sexual fantasies. Everybody talks about... You know, I want to share my sexual fantasies with my partner, and I'm all for that, okay? What do you want? What do you like? What are your fantasies? But also, there are some consequences in sharing your sexual fantasies, and we'll get into that. And I, as always, okay, you can share the live video. Oops, sorry. Let me step away a little bit. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, you can share the live video on your timeline for a chance to win. The Relationship Guide, Tools to Ignite Your Relationship. So, yes, talk about the book a little bit. It is a way to ignite passion, to ignite chemistry in your relationship and in your marriage. You kick it, you know, kick it up a notch or two. Nothing is perfect, but the book is down to earth. Yes, there is adult content, adult language in it. It's written like I talk to my clients. I'm down to earth, right? I'm real. I don't BS anybody. So it's a real easy read, and hopefully uh, it'll help you kick up your relationship and help you have the relationship you've always craved. And as we're talking about today, maybe fantasized about, okay? And the K's and Al's, welcome, Mino. Um, hopefully everybody's doing okay. Now, um, I'm going to talk about sexual taboos first. Now we're going to get into about sharing your fantasies. I'm all about that. But, yeah, there always is a but, right? There are consequences in sharing your fantasy. So we're going to get into that the last half of the show. First, I want to talk about, you know, what are your sexual taboos? Is it oral sex? Is it anal sex? Or is it about, you know what, having sex outside of your bedroom, right? You don't want to do it over the couch. You don't want to do it in the living room. What about your sexual taboos about... Um, Maybe in a car as you're driving around, as everyone talks about getting, uh, you know, roadhead. Yeah, it might be difficult for a lady to drive a car and to get orally pleased. I 
yeah, that's just, <laughs> let's face it, it's probably impossible, right? Why you're driving, it is. Just because of our uh, biological differences uh, with that aspect. But what are your sexual taboos? What are something you won't do? However, I want to sort of challenge you as well. What is the reason for your sexual taboos, okay? Is it because you believe or feel it's gross? Let's face it, is it painful? We don't want to, you know, get into that. That fine line between, you know, pleasure and pain type of thing that some people are into, you know, whips and chains and dominatrix. Maybe that's a taboo for you. I want to know what your sexual taboo is. And I also want you to tell me or explain to me why it is, okay? And I also want to challenge you with your taboos, the do's and don'ts um, that are in your sexual repertoire, and also why that is. Is it because your belief system? Is it because your cultural belief aspects that, you know what, we don't do this, good girls don't do this, um, that type of aspect, okay? I want to know what they are to you, and what is your sexual, do I want to say, everyone talks about sexual hang-ups, right? That's sort of maybe rude to say sexual hang-ups. We all have boundaries. We all have maybe sexual stigmas that we don't want to cross, okay? What is your taboo about, you know, oral sex? What about finishing with oral sex, ladies, is that gross to you? Is that taboo? Some women love it. Some people are okay with it. You know what? It's a matter of taste, if you will. <laughs> Sorry, it's Monday. Maybe maybe I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> a matter of taste. Oh, boy. I, I couldn't resist. People know me. I'm a smart ass. Um, or is it, you know, what is the sexual taboo about guys that won't perform oral sex on their ladies? Do you think it's it's gross, it's disgusting, it's, you know, women bleed there? You know, I hear this all the time, whatever, okay? I want to know, and also, you know, anal sex, the back door. Maybe there's a certain position that is taboo for you because you feel it's degrading. And, you know what, it's just, uh, I'm a lady, I'm not this, I'm not that. I want to help you maybe reduce your taboos, again, it's not up to me. You set those taboos. But I want you to challenge yourself. What is the taboo about what is it? Is it um, religious beliefs? Is it because, you know what, good girls don't do that. They don't ever do that. Um, but I want to challenge it. I want you to challenge your own sexual taboos. And I talk about sexual taboos. What if you have tried a certain thing and you just don't like it? It's not for you. Is that a taboo for you? Not at all, right? It's just something. There is a difference between your sexual taboos versus your sexual likes and dislikes, okay? Is it taboo that um, you have tried it? Say anal sex and it's just not for you, okay? Um, is that a taboo? No, it's not a taboo. It's one of your likes, you know, your dislikes type of thing. There's women that love anal sex, women that love finishing, swallowing with oral sex. And it's one of those things, and that's where I want to sort of cross the border, if you will, about what a sexual taboo is versus your dislikes. And I'm going to challenge you to look at, if it's taboo, you know what? Chances are you have not tried it because, like I said before, because of your sexual maybe beliefs, your value system, say, oh, good girls don't do this, or you know what, gentlemen don't do this, and your lady might be saying, don't be a gentleman, I want you to do this, right? So I want to look at, you know, what is your dislikes versus taboos. This show is talking about your sexual taboos. These are things that you have not tried, okay? You won't try because you believe it's wrong, immoral, uh, makes you a a slut or makes you not a gentleman, again, the show is equal genders, right? It's not just for the ladies and it's not just for men. It is for both genders and trying to reach at, you know, what would it take for you to reduce your sexual taboos and what it would, why are they in place and what would it take for you to try a certain thing and find out if you like it, you don't like it, okay? Or if your partner likes it 
versus you like it. If you are doing something, um, you know, that you don't like, but your partner loves it, your partner is going to feel like you're just doing it to do it, that you don't enjoy it. Most people, me included, okay, men, women, doesn't matter. I get in my office all the time on a daily basis, okay, to where, you know what, Greg, I don't want her, you know what, it just turns me off if she doesn't like giving me oral sex and she does it. It just it doesn't do anything for me. It's a turn off. I agree with that. If someone feels like, you know what, that your partner is doing it out of obligation, ugh, that's a huge turn off, okay? So I want to look at, you know, what is your sexual taboo? And we're going to get into that. <laughs> oh, McKay heard about the taste. Oops. <laughs> um, Lisa, you mentioned you have to try it to know if you don't like it. I agree with that. <clears throat> I'm all about trying different things, trying new things, and one aspect is your partner. You might think your partner is not into a certain thing because they won't talk, they won't express themselves, whatever, or maybe, you know, is it frustrating that your partner won't even try a certain thing that, um, you know what, that you're not into mentally, emotionally. So it's a big difference, and I'm not talking, we're talking about sexual taboos. We all need to hold our value systems. You know what, not everybody, it's maybe against their beliefs, their value systems to have a gangbang, to have a threesome, to have an orgy, that type of thing. I get about that, but I'm talking about, you know what, what if your taboo is anal sex and you never tried it? What if your taboo is oral sex or not finishing, you know, with oral sex? Why is that a taboo for you? Um, and I want to challenge your belief in all those aspects. Can certain taboos that you try it, what if you like it? Maybe you're afraid that a sexual taboo, maybe you're going to find out that you actually love it or like it and enjoy it. And you're afraid that what that means to you as a gentleman, as a woman, you know, being a lady in the street type of thing that it is against you and oh my god what's that make me if I actually like anal sex and does it make me a derelict does it make me bad does it make me not a good person so I want to hear on your your avenue people about you know what it is to where what is right what is no oh diamond hey welcome we watching I have no taboos don't tease me now um hold on now I'm gonna have to take a cold shower you have no taboos oh baby 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 no we look at and I know Lisa doesn't have any taboos either but <laughs> looking at <clears throat> you know do you talk to your friends about taboos do you talk about you know situations to your you know guys out there hey I know Tony checked in hey huge welcome so you look at um, you know do you talk to your guys what's taboo to them do you talk to your friends about you know what what is taboo what they want and do they always try to get you to break you what your taboos are you know what I'm not talking about challenging you know what is totally against your beliefs your essence you know like a threesome orgy um, swinging I'm not into those either okay yes I'm a <laughs> Detroit's love guru and I'm not into swinging whatever but I work with a lot of couples that do and you know it's okay it's again it's about what your values are and it's not right or wrong no one should judge them okay you are the only ones that, that should judge your own values your own you know belief systems whatever but I, I want you to expand you know what your taboos are what they what they aren't so I want to look at what are they throw them out there okay um, Lisa you mentioned and things can be different better with other people. Ooh, that, you know what, Lisa, that is a great point. Just because you may not have liked it with one person doesn't mean you can't like it with somebody else. You know what, Lisa, I love that. That is phenomenal. And you're absolutely correct because, you know, some people can be, you know, super rough, say, when it's come to oral or even um, anal sex. You know, they can be real disrespectful and it's all about them. And it's not about being maybe respectful and being pleasurable, being gentle. So that is, um, you know what? 
That's phenomenal. I, that's a great point, Lisa. I agree. So, you know, how you, some people might try certain things and they, it just didn't work for them. They hated it. Say it was very painful and they felt very degraded. So you look at the element to where, you know what, I'm never going to try it again. And here, maybe it was the person you were with, Lisa. That was a great, great comment, Lisa. I appreciate that. And it's true. It's very true. Um, Diamond, you, my, the fiancé enjoys my creativity. <laughs> Good for him, damn it. No, <laughs> that's awesome. That's terrific. And what does your creativity mean when it comes to sexual taboos? You know what? I want to talk, you know, challenge yourself. What is sexual taboo for you? Maybe you don't want to try a certain position. Maybe you don't want to have sex in a certain place. Maybe finishing with oral sex, you know, have the guy finishing in your mouth um, throat, whatever, maybe you think that's degrading, disgusting, whatever, where all the women love it. They love feeling, seeing their man pleased and all that aspect. And men out there, you know, what is your taboo about performing oral sex on your lady? I get, you know, hygiene issues. Yeah, ladies, you know what, both men and women need to work on hygiene issues and make sure that is in place. However, there's some guys that just won't, but they want to receive oral sex from their partner. And I'm like, why is that fair? You know what? That's not fair. And there's some guys that, you know, they think it's gross. They think it's this, that, whatever. You know what? I'm all about whatever pleases my lady. Hell to the yes. It's a huge turn on to me. And guys, I want you to challenge, you know, what is your hang up or taboo about performing oral sex on your lady? Most guys, not all, just like ladies. You know what? They love performing oral sex. I love it. I want it back in return, too. But check out what your taboos are. And if you haven't tried it, look at yourself why. What is the reason behind it? And we could talk, you know, maybe getting, you know, it's not only, you know, talking about oral sex, anal sex, uh, you know, a lot of taboos around that. But how many people want their, you know, think that getting their toes sucked or played with is gross, you know what? Maybe they think it's uh, gross um, having performing oral sex and licking or sucking on a guy's balls. You know what? Maybe they think that's gross. And a lot of guys love it, you know what? It's very pleasurable. The same thing with uh, the labia about the females too. That can be very pleasurable, played with, sucked and all that aspect. Oh, I won't, it's gross, it's uh, whatever. And you look at the situation, my job is to help you evolve and grow as a person, as a sexual being, as, you know, to try to highlight and kick up your sexual life so it doesn't become boring, so it doesn't become just repetitious, but also that it maintains the emotional contact. <clears throat> there are some people that have sexual um taboos about staring at each other in the eyes, right? They think that is so taboo, that is so scary for them. So again, I'm here to challenge your values, to challenge your belief, and look at what is sexually taboo to you, and ask yourself why. Sit down with your partner and talk about them. First, you know what, challenge yourself to go over what your sexual taboos are, why they're in place, and maybe what it would take to maybe challenge those and maybe try to turn them into a like. And if they're a dislike, they're not a taboo anymore. You found out you just don't like the certain thing, okay? And so challenge yourself, okay? Now, uh, Diamond, we're going to love oral, giving and receiving, all of it. Practice makes perfect. You know what, Diamond? Awesome and terrific. I'm very, very happy for your fiance. Um, maybe you need. Maybe we can have a you as a guest and promote um, lady sexuality. Ooh, I love your attitude, and I know Lisa. Lisa is going to be the same way too. And getting into promoting sexuality, why do you think it's you know nasty, dirty, whatever? Versus, I'm going to try that and see if I like it. What would it take for you to say that to change your attitude? From a taboo to, you know what, I'm going to at least try it. Therefore, you know what, it's not going to be a taboo anymore. But it might be something I love, I like, something I don't like. But at least it's not a taboo anymore. Again, 
it cuts across, you know, values about, you know, some people think a threesome is cheating. Some don't. Some people think a threesome, or I'm sorry, uh, swinging is cheating. To those that agree to it, that's not cheating. So that's different between your value issues versus what you feel is a taboo, okay? So I want you to challenge those. Next, I want to talk about fantasies and sharing fantasies, okay? How many people out there want to share fantasies? Ooh, how many people are scared to share fantasies with their partner? And yes, as I mentioned at the beginning of today's show, sharing your sexual fantasies can be very scary. And a lot of people are going to talk about, you know what, what's so scary about sharing sexual fantasies? Oops, excuse me. But it can be scary. Because if you share a sexual fantasy, say a guy wants the lady to peg him, okay? And if you don't know what pegging is, it is where a lady maybe straps on a dildo or uses a dildo and, you know what, maybe even a finger and has anal play with the man. Maybe he wants that and wants to try it. That doesn't make him gay. It, it, no, it doesn't. It's about who you're attracted to. Um, you know, your sexual orientation is who you're attracted to, not the act. Got it? So a lot of people think this and that. It's, you know, you're a lesbian or gay if you like this or like that. No, it's who you're attracted to, okay? That's plain and simple, okay? So you look at, you know, he wants to maybe get pegged, okay? And now he's afraid to bring it up. And if he does bring it up, he's going to think maybe his wife, his girlfriend, whatever, is going to think he is gay. Maybe he's not a man. Maybe he's um, a derelict or deranged for wanting to try this. Not at all. So there is that danger. There is that consequence. I'm all about you know sharing your fantasies. But I'm also a realist that sharing your fantasies might create a huge disconnect with your partner and in your relationship and the avenue is to where what the hell do you do about it after it's released after you share your fantasy or certain fantasies right you can't ever take those back and sharing a fantasy also means you know what that you might not want to carry it out got it everybody assumes you share a fantasy or have a fantasy you want to fulfill that fantasy not at all that's not the case, and it's okay to share. You know what, I thought about this, this is a fantasy, but I don't think I would ever go through with it. I wouldn't do it, okay? It's just a fantasy type of aspect, okay? I think a lot of people, myself included, we've been there, that type of thing, but a lot of people need to realize, you know what, sharing your fantasies, I'm all for that, but I want you to understand the consequences in sharing those fantasies, okay? People that say, oh, sharing your fantasies, whatever, there's no consequence, it's great, whatever. Um, it, it is great sharing your fantasies, but there are consequences, like I mentioned. What if uh, your girlfriend or wife has a fantasy about, you know, you watching her getting done by another guy, right? Maybe she wants to fulfill that, and you know what? You're like, oh, my God, now she wants somebody else. I'm not you know, fulfilling her enough, I'm not enough for her sexually, whatever. You know what? Now you're worried about um, her wanting somebody else, that she's going to cheat on you, all this stuff. Do you understand where these consequences go? So sharing your fantasies can be um, great. It can be invigorating. However, there's also consequences to sharing those fantasies. I just want you to be aware of them. And you can sort of you know, gauge or do a progression with fantasies. You know what? I want my toes sucked. I want you to, you know, maybe lick and suck on my labia. I want you to play with my breasts. And the guy might want to share a fantasy of getting his nipples licked or sucked, right? So you look at the situation of, you know what, going through all those elements, and it's a progression. Okay, you like this, try this. And now you can go for the full Monty about your sexual fantasy about being pegged or whatever. It's a gauge process, right? So you need to gauge how your partner reacts and all, everything. I'm all about sharing fantasies, but again, I'm here to help people, and I'm not here to blow smoke up anyone's booties. You know what? That you share your fantasies and everything's great and everything's hunky-dory. No, 
They can create a huge emotional and physical disconnect um, in a relationship because, you know, all of a sudden you're making love and after a fantasy you shared and your partner thinks it's gross or that you're deranged, okay, and all of a sudden next time you make love have sex, they're thinking, oh my God, he actually wants this or she actually wants this. Do you understand what type of mind games and insecurities and disconnect they can play? So I want you to be careful with those, okay? Um, Diamond, you mentioned love to role play. Complete with wardrobe. Oh, God, baby. Also, love being watched and pushed to the limits on public. I love that. There's a thrill to, um, you know what, getting it on in the parking lot in the daylight, right? <laughs> what about getting, uh, you know, giving your man roadhead driving down the road? There's that mystique and sort of that adventurous side to, oh, man, we might get caught. We might be seen. You know, people talk about exhibitionists and flashers and all this aspect. Um, maybe that's a fantasy, too, having sex in a public place. But, again, <laughs> I'm all about trying certain things, but I want you aware of laws in your area, again, the consequences of fulfilling those fantasies, right? You can try it, you can risk it, but if you get caught, you know what? Well, Greg wanted me to uh, try this, express my fantasies, and don't come after me about that. I want you to be aware of your laws, and again, the consequences about it. So sharing your fantasies, I'm all about it. Share them. Do, a, do sort of a progression um, ladder approach, okay? Keep building up. Share what maybe from what you believe are mild fantasies up to more your more risque fantasies, okay? More daring fantasies and the risk. That doesn't mean you have to fulfill your fantasy. It also doesn't mean, you know what, you have to share all your fantasies because your partner, you know what, might hold them against you. It's that, you know what, do I want to take that risk and you know what, with the consequences, okay? And it depends on where your relationship is, where your marriage is, and also the security level and how close you feel in that relationship, okay? So, check this out. You know what, challenge your sexual taboos. What are they? Why are they in place? Why are you not willing to try them, okay? Again, now, and also, sharing your sexual fan fantasies, I'm all about it. Go after it, okay, people? But also worry and look at, you know what, the consequences about sharing those fantasies because it might change your partner's view of you, okay? So I'm here live, <clears throat> excuse me if my voice holds out, Monday through Friday, 12 noon Eastern Time, the Art of Relationships radio show right here, Facebook Live, and also you can catch... Um, the recorded shows, go to, you know, under more on my video or under more, click on videos and you'll see all the older shows as well. And all my audio shows are on iHeart.com, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, going to be soon on Spotify, SoundCloud, TuneIn. They're all over the place, okay? Those are just the audio versions. The video, live videos are right here on Facebook only as far as now. And, oh, now Diamond says, ROI driving. Oh, yes. <laughs> now we look at, um, check them all out, okay? I appreciate you sharing uh, the video on your timeline for a chance to win the Relationship Guide, Tools to Ignite, Love, and Intimacy, okay? So, share that. Check out my website. I got some deals going on for my program, 28 Days to ignite your relationship. It's a self-help with a bunch of videos and everything program, um, handouts and stuff I have to help you have the relationship you crave, okay? Thank you for all the support. Take care, everybody. Peace and love as always. Happy Monday. See you tomorrow, noon Eastern time.